Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome back to the Valder BB Show as I move on to my next guest, Rachel Hodgson. She's president and CEO of the International Well Building Institute. You know, living through a pandemic has heightened our awareness and many parents around these issues of health and safety in school. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Rachel, welcome to the Valder BB Show. Thank you so much for having me, Valder. I just finished watching um, uh, some school district where the parents are fighting. They're fighting over masks. They're fighting over just everything that is supposed to uh, uh, make it better for the kids. Where's the state of our schools today? Pretty darn awful. Our school facility infrastructure was already facing a national emergency, and then COVID-19 took a long-term bad situation with our school buildings and made it truly urgent. The report we've just released, the 2021 State of Our Schools report, shines a light on severe and chronic underinvestment to the tune of $85 billion a year. And that's eroding the company's the country's ability to provide safe, healthy, and sustainable schools. That number is up 85% since the 2016 report. I can believe that. You know, Rachel, I believe this, and you may not be able to follow me on it. You know, evil is just making people take their eyes off the ball because they're paying attention to everything except what they need to, and that's the kids. So tell me, I'm in Texas. Tell me about some of the schools in my region. Okay, let's talk about the schools in Texas. Texas is really interesting. It's essentially um, a kind of tale of two cities. On the one hand, um, Texas is really investing adequate amounts of money in their capital improvements. But on the other hand, the students in Texas who have the least are really suffering the most. The um, rural and lower income school districts receive exponentially less in the way of funding than students in um, lower poverty districts. So the um, Texas shortfall is only about $200 million a year. That's not much when you think about um, a state like Rhode Island, way smaller than Texas. They have an annual gap of $11 billion. But Texas's high poverty districts receive a startling $6.9 million less on average than schools in low poverty districts. And that is just not fair. That is not fair. And also, too, it's not fair for governors to threaten school boards not to continue giving them, I guess, whatever portion of money they get if they do not follow the mandates about masks if they've sent out. Tell me about some of these inequities in funding and where does this funding come from that people can hold it over their heads? Well, I'll tell you that where the funding doesn't come from is the federal government. The federal government provides 1% of funding for school facilities every year, and that leaves states and school districts without what they need to be able to fund schools to be even just sufficient and meet the basic needs of education. What our report found is that high poverty communities receive substantially less than districts serving wealthier communities, just like I talked about in Texas. Rural districts are particularly disadvantaged, as are those who serve higher populations of black and brown students. And the fact is that the longer we wait, the more expensive it is to fix these problems. And that means we're falling further and further behind. So is that why some schools are so coveted in keeping kids out of their district if they don't live in the district? It used to be you could get a transfer to a school, you know, of your choice. This is how old I am, okay? But now, I mean, it's almost they'll take you to court because they don't want people out of their districts. So is it because good districts are getting more money than the not so good districts, you think? 
Yeah, I mean, the inequity is really pretty shocking. And I think that, you know, those spots in well-maintained school buildings um, are, are coveted. I think that, you know, schools that have adequate amount of funding, um, they, they want to keep it in the neighborhood in many instances. Um, and I think that what we need to understand is that all of our schools need to provide equal access to education. Our country is built on the foundation of that belief. Well, it's also built on brown versus brown. There's no more separate but equal. All schools are just supposed to be equal. Do we not live up to that creed? We're absolutely not living up to that creed. And Texas is definitely not an exception to that. Every single one of our children deserves the right to attend a school that's safe, that's healthy, that has quality air, that has drinkable water. And the fact is that we're just not providing those kinds of equal opportunities to our children. Parents are hearing this. Grandparents are hearing this. What can they do and where do they go online as I wrap up to get more information? Well, this is a perfect moment because parents and concerned community members can pick up the phone and call their members of Congress because there is $82 billion on the table in the infrastructure bill for school facility improvements. So we need to make sure that that money stays in the bill and goes to the communities that need it most. So you can visit stateofourschools2021.org to download a free copy of the report and a state-specific profile so that you know exactly what's happening in your neck of the woods. Rachel, this has been the most informative interview that I've engaged in this week. Thank you so very much for bringing this forward. I wish you luck. I want to see that survey. Can I see that survey online too? Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.